So Pete, um, welcome to the Origin Idea Society uh, podcast. Um, we are planning a range of different podcasts. Ultimately, we want to have conversations with interesting people and creative people like yourself um, because everybody needs a little bit of inspiration, I suppose, to liven up their work nowadays, uh, especially in today's world. Um, we're stuck at home. How's, how's lockdown been for you, Pete? It's been, it's been interesting um, on lots of different levels. I've had my ups and my downs through lockdown, like everyone has. Um, but uh, I think uh, a lot of remote working, um, being more efficient with time, um, getting to spend more time with my family, which has been the big bonus of this. Um, obviously, listen, there's a pandemic going on and people have lost their lives and um, families are suffering because of it. But um, I, and I'm well aware of that. And it's a real strange time for everybody. So I'm not saying it flippantly, but there has been some i mean it's like the reset button has been pushed and it's given me the opportunity to think about the way that i lead my life um in work mm. and um, i'm certainly at home and that's been brilliant for me just being able to spend more time with, with my wife julia and my kids Savannah and elena yeah and in terms of uh, i suppose your background it's hard to give a, a bio of you pete uh, you know i was thinking about you know what's your bio so i've kind of got you know definitely broadcaster presenter, um, entertainer in many ways, producer, um, DJ, speaker, TV show contributor, uh, uh, all around great fella. What have I left out? Uh, there's just so much to remember in terms of your background. Yeah, I think for me, the, the big, and it's lovely to say all those things because um, I have lots of different interests. And I think even more so now in 2020, um, everyone tries to, to put each other or you know in a box you know so this guy does this and this girl does this um and, and for me i've always tried to transcend that so to speak and um, i'm able to try and do as best as i can um sort of follow uh my passions and my interests and you know um and and again there's lots of different platforms to do those on be it on radio be it online now and um, tv um I mean, there's lots of different platforms to be on and lots of different platforms to be able to, as best as you possibly can, um, sort of follow your, your dreams and your passions. Um, yeah. And that's, that, that's, that's pretty much where, where it's at for me. So there, there's lots of things that I like doing and um, I've been fortunate enough to try and pave a way to be able to do as, as many of those as possible. And how's, how's the broadcasting in the morning going now? I'm sure it's strange for you being at home. How have you found that? Well, to, to be honest, I've been very fortunate I don't know. There's a lot of our guys who are working from home. Rebecca, um, who's on my team, is working from home. I'm I'm going into the the, the station in the morning still, um, but our mid morning show or evening show, um, shows of the weekend and whatnot are coming from home. Um, so I've uh, broadcast doing outside broadcast is something that I've always really enjoyed. Uh, I've broadcast from my house before, um, on numerous occasions, and I quite like that. It's not it's not for every broadcaster because. I think a lot of broadcasters maybe are, are settled within the studio environment. Yeah. Um, we've been out doing our show um, in a multitude of places from the airports to shopping centres to wh wherever. And, um, and so I've always really enjoyed that. Um, doing it from home is a different thing. I think you can, albeit I'm going into work and there is no one in the building. I mean, there's literally, we've got three stations in our building, Downtown Radio, Downtown Country and Cool FM. Um, so there is, if there's a broadcaster in each of those studios, and then there's one person in news. So like our whole programming departments at home, our sales departments at home, our creative solutions departments at home. I mean, you're just going into an empty building. Um, but but for me, it's still that routine of getting up in the morning um, at 4:45 and 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 driving somewhere. Um, but I tell you this much: I'm out of the building, brave and quick these days, and back home at 10:17. <laughs> 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 I'm sure, I'm sure. Uh, I mean, one of the things that we wanted to chat, because obviously you have a massive following, the largest radio show in the country, is that, is that? <laughs> yeah, the, the, the latest figures just came out, so um, yeah, but we, listen, we do, all, we do all right. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, one of the things that I suppose that crosses or transcends radio and digital is building and engaging audiences, and who better to talk about doing that than, than you? Um, in terms of your 
early career then or, or I suppose your career to where you are today if you were to you know I suppose if you were to advise somebody who's interested in getting into I suppose broadcasting or even just into sort of engaging um audiences ultimately you know how would they get started how did you get started so what, what's the um, top view of your career okay so um uh um, whenever I was in my teenage years, sort of 13, 14, I developed a love of radio whenever I was eight or nine. Um, and it was Cool FM. It was, the station came on air in 1990. And, um, and I grew up listening to it. And uh, I wanted to do what the, the guys on there were doing. Um, but in my teenage years, I, I, I discovered a massive love for dance music. And it was the era, the sort of super star dj was starting to come along super clubs mm. bloody blah, blah and i discovered you know i'm sitting here now you can see all my vinyl records in the background um i, I discovered a love of that my parents bought me a set of turntables for christmas um around my 14th or 15th well sort of 14 or 15th time taught myself how to mix records over the years and got my first gig in a club when i was 17. so that, that's how it started um but i always had this want to get into radio and into broadcasting um, and um, I, I managed to get myself onto a, a dance music show as a contributor, uh, and it sort of went from there. Um, and I uh, got my foot in the door and then managed to get myself on air uh, in, the, in a proper capacity, two shows a week, about six months before I graduated at university. And then when I finished at university, I DJed nightclubs to make a few quid, and I hung out in that radio station every single day in life in the hope that I would get on. And uh, two years after that, I started... Um, breakfast broadcasting and the rest as they say it is it is history um so yeah that's a sort of a brief snapshot um obviously it sounds so simplistic but um there was a there was a lot of hustling along the way to to, to, to try and make it happen what, what were maybe some of the key moves then what was the biggest hustles now is the right way well, the, 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 the big the biggest thing i can tell anybody um is that and I think this is, it was really important then. I think it's even more important now um, because we communicate with each other so differently now. But back then, I had to, I had to develop this inner confidence and belief within myself that I could do it and then go and tell people that I could do it. Um, and I say to anyone now who asks me about broadcasting or whatever, I say, well, you may be brilliant and you may have, the best ideas in the world but unless you actually go out and tell people that that's that those are your ideas and this is what you want to do no one's going to come to you and go here come on i've got a job for you you, you need to you need to be able to communicate and go out and tell people what you stand for what you're about you may not know everything i certainly didn't know everything at the start i still don't know everything now i'm learning every single day in life but you, you need to go and you need to go and, and speak to people. And that's really difficult because everyone says, well, how do you go and speak to someone when you don't know them? Well, you know what? You've got to go and find a way of, of getting in the rear, putting yourself in front of the, the key people um, and, and try to make it work, try to make it happen. And, did you um, have that vision? And like, did you have like a plan? Is that, is that was what you know, was in your head? I want to be a radio presenter. Was it just a presenter? Yes, yeah. yeah, sir. No, you know, yeah, I wanted to be, I wanted to be a DJ. I wanted to play in nightclubs. I wanted to be on the radio. I wanted to be the guy speaking between songs. That's that was always the plan. That's always where it was. It was always in my head. And I think, I think that is really important. I think you need to. I mean, you can speak to people and go, "Well, what do you want to do? I want to do a bit of this and do a bit of that." I think if you have an idea, a proper idea of where you want to go, mm -hmm. um, then then that's um, then that's a really good thing. Because even 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 now, you know. The aim hasn't changed for me. I yeah. still want my broadcasting first and foremost, and everything else comes along with it to a point. I, I love doing events. I love, I mean, you're just taking your set of skills and you're moving it to a different environment. So whether it's in, in my wee studio at home or whether it's in the studio at Cool FM or whether it's in front of an audience of four or 500 people at Titanic Belfast or whatever, you're just taking the skill and you're just moving it to a different setting. So I could be at... Um, uh, at uh, Windsor Park and before the Northern Ireland Games announcing the teams. I could be at the Kingspan Stadium announcing the Ulster team. It, it, no matter where it is, you're just taking those skills that you've developed through broadcasting and presenting over the years in lots of different uh, arenas and just 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 tilting it to what is required. Yeah. Um, 
but that all sounds again so simplistic but it just comes with experience after experience after experience and i've had loads of experiences that have been amazing i've had also loads of experiences that haven't quite gone to plan oh really but those are those are the ones those are the ones where you learn the most because you know the next time that that comes yeah. that you'll do it differently oh, you or, don't have to share Go on. what's what's one of the worst ones <laughs> i stood at raven hill um on the pitch they were trying something new Right. And this is this is before this is during the stadium redevelopment, and um, they the whole the whole main stand as it used to be was knocked down, and they had a small bit of terracing at, at that particular stage, and just put speakers up around the place. And it was, um, if my memory serves me correct, I tried to blank this one out. It was like a European Cup night or whatever, and they weren't they, they weren't used to at that point. It was an old school mentality around the Ulster rugby team. They weren't used to having somebody on the pitch trying to either whip up the crowd or to do the announcements or whatever. So this was the first night they were doing it and I was the guinea pig and I said, yeah, no problem at all. I'll come down and do it. So I came down to do it and we tested all the equipment and whatever. And um, I walk out into the middle of the pitch and I start saying what I've got to say and then it goes up, 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 up and all breaks up and the equipment doesn't work. And it's a packed house. There must be, what, 15,000 people or whatever it was there. And then you start getting the, the, the wise cracks from the crowd and the boos and whatever else. And I'm standing there like on my own in the middle of the pitch with everyone giving it to me. So again, it's one of those, you just have to, you just have to just let it, it's like water off a duck's back sometimes. Other times it can hurt when things don't go quite your way, but you, you take the experience off it and you're better in the knowledge that if something like that happens again, you know, uh, another way of dealing with it. Yeah. Did you have any role models that you would have, looked at whenever I suppose you were coming up through thinking yeah that's that's who I yeah. want to be after was that? yeah yeah so so I I, I uh, in terms of radio um well just broadcasting in general so uh, in terms of the dance music thing Pete Tong was my hero um in terms of of main main mainstream um broadcasting it was Chris Evans um in terms of interviewing people I remember going to America for the first time in 2002 I went over for the it was then the Miami Winter Music Conference um, and uh, my first time in the States, I'm 22 and uh, I'm watching CNN and, and Larry King had a um, show on CNN and um, I, it was like Michael Parkinson would have been a big um, mm. uh, influence because he was so good at getting people to open up. Larry King was just amazing and my favourite part of my job right now um, and over the years has been interviewing people. It's just, I just love conversation. I think being from this part of the world, we enjoy conversation, we enjoy the crack, and I love hearing people's stories. I love being able to to ask the right questions to get the best out of someone and to to allow them to tell their story and, and to, to dig into um, into their feelings and, and, and why certain things happen a certain way. And, and in my job, I get the opportunity to do that. Yeah. Um, uh, in, a, in a live environment, um, probably more so if it's a QA, mm. sort of setting in front of four or 500 people or whatever. Um, on the radio show, you know, sometimes I, I would love to maybe be able to sit down and have a, a conversation for half an hour, 40 minutes. It doesn't allow that. I get maybe 10, 12 minutes at a push, um, and, and that's it. But whenever you get the opportunity to have that, it's brilliant. And I love every moment of it. So whenever I was watching Michael Parkinson, Larry King, and how they narrated those, um, those conversations, just fantastic brilliant broadcasters and, and, and big inspirations in terms of i mean the radio show is huge um as we as we mentioned and it's a really engaged audience you know you'd listen and you know the, the phone-ins can be um as, uh, quite funny i mean nearly hit and miss sometimes a massive surprise and then there's silence in the end of the phone as compared to a child that wins a sweetie you know and, and mm -hmm. they, they go mad but the audience overall with your show is really really engaged and you know obviously there's a, a the success of the show has been based around that audience engagement you know how have you managed to do that so successfully over the years and you know continue to keep the audiences engaged with you so the audience for our show is a real mixture um mm -hmm. cool fm is, is you know will be seen as a youth brand and that's right you know it is that's that's our focus if you imagine the core our core market is like 1834 but then um, we have everyone from 10 years of age to, yeah. to 60 or more. It just, um, and I think that there's a number of reasons for that. Um, I think, I think, uh, I think our music is right. I think, um, 
I think uh, the heritage in the in the marketplace is 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 right. And uh, when I say it's right, it just is what it is. You know, the station's mm-hmm. been around for a long time. It's it's it's, it's an ind- people people feel an association with the brand. Perhaps they have grown up with the brand or whatever. And and, and Cool FM's always really stayed true to what. Yes, it's evolved, but it's stayed true to what ordinarily it it um it set out to be. Um, I I think the the show um uh, and why it is sort of resonated with an audience and why people have 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 joined us because it's a big privilege uh to be allowed into people's lives I, I i don't take it for granted i think i mean the easiest decision anyone has in a day is just to turn us off or even easier than that not even switch us on so so the fact that they do is um is uh it's amazing and we're very very thankful for that and we never take it for granted do you specific- in terms of the connection in terms of the connection uh, I, being yourself is such a simple statement to make yeah. and people go okay but when you're behind the microphone um it's not as simple as that for everybody uh, just to be yourself i think i've got better um i can i can only speak about myself personally here you know i think if you speak to everybody you know if you speak to paolo and rebecca who's on the show you speak to any other person who's on the station or, or any other radio station for that matter everyone deals with it in a different way for me i am um, over the years, I've just built up a, 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 where I feel particularly comfortable in front of the mic. And I think that's come with life experience. I think it's come with experience in terms of being a broadcaster and, and doing lots of events and different bits and bobs. Um, and I think as I've got older, I've got better because um, I know who I am. Whenever you're t- asking me about my inspirations and I talk about Pete Tong and I talk about Chris Evans and all of that, there was probably a time then whenever I thought, well, I was young and naive that perhaps I had to be like them in order to get on. And a very early um, lesson that I learned was that there only is one Chris Evans and there's only one Pete Bowen, there's only one Larry King, there's only one Michael Parkinson, there's only one Pete Snodden. So I've just got to be who I am and I've got to, I've got to put out there who I am. And, um, and, and the, the big thing with that is I believe that you have to give enough of yourself so that the audience gets to know you mm-hmm. and they, they, they become like your friend. So you've got to give enough. If you think about any of your relationships you've, you've got in business or in and um, just in your personal life, you know there's a reason why you have come together with these people. You know they are your friends. You respect them. You admire them. They have given enough of themselves for you to go. I trust that person, and I want to spend time with them. It's exactly the same thing in terms of trying to build an audience. You know th- whoever comes to to listen to the show needs to trust you. They need to maybe like what you stand for. Um, they may not like what you stand for, but they still listen to hear what you've got to say next. Every broadcaster is different, but for me, that is the that is the key. It's about building that relationship, giving enough of yourself so people get to know who you are and they want to spend time with you. Yeah. But there's a fine line. There's a fine line between giving enough of yourself so they come come with you and are on your team, and a fine line between being your man's just all about himself and it's about to switch off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that that that's that's a real fine balance. Yeah. And in terms of you know, do you know what, what is gonna work in terms of content for your audience? Or you know, is that trial and error? You know, how, how do you get to an understanding of that? So um I like to think I like to think that I know what what uh what will work. Um and again yes it is through through trial and error, but you see, for me, I, I've got this this really simple um, strategy, and that is just keep it simple. And mm-hmm. and I and I say it all the time. And even whenever you go back, if I think back to to, to whenever I was at university and I, you know marketing lectures and stuff, it was all you know keep it simple, keep it simple. And mm-hmm. uh, I, I think the acronym was KISS, keep it simple, stupid. That's right. And I still stick to, I still stick to that every single day in life. You know. Um, the, the real human, you know, we, we all, the way we connect with each other, um, be it on mobile or be it face-to-face or whatever, you're just trying to, 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 to keep the same sort of connection with the, with whoever the audience is. So I find that whenever you're speaking about human stuff, you know, the relationships that you have, be it with your own family, be it with your friends, um, whenever you, you see things in public um, that... Um, 
people do certain things in a certain way and you bring that to air, that's whenever the magic happens because every single person who is listening will 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 know the situation, will have seen it, will have will that that will that will give them their own emotions on it. And then they will want to pick up the phone and explain what happened to them in that situation. So I've I've learned over the years that um that I I, I never switch off. I find I, at the start um I find that quite difficult. You don't you don't do the radio show and finish at 10 o'clock in the morning. At the, you know, I, I live that radio show every hour of every single day subconsciously. I'm not actively thinking about it, but when something happens, if I'm out and about or I see something, I will write it down. Yeah. Um, as I've got older, uh, you know, the days of going, oh, we'll talk about that in the morning. And then I get into the show the next morning and I go, oh, what was that again? So I, I use notes in my phone and I just, I, I just any wee, any wee snippet of something that I think is relevant or I could bring to the show, I write it down and then I uh, look at it the night before or in the morning and I think about what way I could bring it to life, what way we could bring it to life. And then I, you know, I, I speak to the guys and give them a, a tip bit of what I'm thinking and then they, they, they come up with something and they think, oh, I remember whenever this happened to me and whatever. And then we just, we, we let out on the show in, uh, in the manner in which we speak to each other on the phone, um, off the show, on air, it's just the same. Yeah, and, and so I suppose for, for those that don't know, you not only present the show, but you also produce the show. And so, you know, that's a lot of people maybe don't even realize that, that you're sort of behind that, you know, behind those ideas and, and really a driver for that. So, so, so people think that we have a whole team. We, we, people yeah. think that we've got a massive team. Like it amazes me that people phone the, the station and, um, I pick up the phone and I go, morning, cool FM. And they go, hi, could you tell Pete that blah de blah And um, I go, you're speaking to him. <laughs> and uh, and some people are really taken back by that because, because you know, if, if you phone OT at 9 at 2 one in the morning, I'll be the person who answers. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, not, it's not like you go through uh, another producer and then mm. um, it, it, it's put through. But um, yeah, that's the way it is. But no, the, the, the production thing, I have no one no different. So my entire career broadcasting, I have always produced, um, and uh, I know no different. And um, I think some people think in life that, you know, wouldn't it be great if you have a producer and whatever? And yeah, maybe some days, maybe whenever, you know, we all have those days whenever we're not feeling particularly creative. And, um, you know, maybe it'd be good on those particular days when someone goes, here, I've been thinking, and then that sparks your imagination. Um, but then on the flip of that, you know, if you've got someone going, oh, you have to do it this way and you have to do it this way and you have mm-hmm. to do it this way. Um, and then that maybe takes away from your own passion about where you want to take it. You know, I'm a great believer and be careful what you wish for. So I believe, you know, so today everything's very digital, as you know. And I believe that you're um, a bit of a TikToker these days as well. Uh, <laughs> How a much- little bit, a little bit. <laughs> Try and <laughs> um, how much do you think that digital has actually changed how you engage with your radio audience? Has it had an impact? Do you think? Yeah, ma- massively, massively. Right. Um, the TikTok thing, by the way, is just the my my kids love it, so it's something that I can do with them. And at the start of lockdown, it was like, oh, you know, it was like one video every few days or one video a week, and now it's like one video every three weeks. But um, uh. TikTok aside, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, um, Snapchat, I mean, the list goes on. Um, I think it's, it's a great way of, of, of seeing what people are talking about. Mm. Um, I, I think that's quite good. It, it's, a, it's a good way of seeing what's trending. But then, you know, the way I look at it is that's great, really, really good. And I can go on and talk about this and that be I think I think no matter what is going on in the world and no matter what platform you're on I think you've got to bring your own your own slant on it your own mm. thoughts and yeah. feelings on it I think that's the the most important thing I mean you can go on and you can just state the obvious here guess what's trending this is trending in the UK right now bloody brilliant but if you've got a, an opinion on it or you've got maybe a different take on it or whatever that's that I think is is really good for putting both on digital platforms and for putting on on the radio as well. Yeah, yeah. The, the Cool FM brand, you know, so it's a brand in its own right, but, you know, there's also the Pete Snodden brand. You know, how important do you feel that personal branding is? 
now more important than what it's ever been. Um, maybe some of your audience will listen to the next thing I'm about to say and say to themselves, oh, he's only angling at that because he is the person in between the songs. But I believe for commercial radio, commercial music-led radio, that the people between the songs are now more important than what they've ever been. When Cool FM was created back in 1990, it was about sweeps of music. Radio up to that point had been very much personality dread, or led, sorry, um, personality, personality dread, personality led. And, and, and uh, 1990 became a new wave of, of radio whereby it was about playing three, four songs in a row with sweepers in between, DJs coming on saying very little, that was this is coming up and and that's the way it is and and still to this day a lot of music radio is like that but the reason why i think it's more important than ever is because back then people came to radio for the music first that's where they that's where they find their new music nowadays it doesn't it doesn't work like that you know they find their new music on youtube and spotify and everything else so for commercial radio music led radio to um exist going forwards because it's 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 it's, it's phenomenal radio now is in such a place, arguably bigger than what it's ever been, even with all the other distractions. And for for that, to, for for, the, for for people to come to it, you need the personalities in between the songs to give them a reason to to come to that specific station at that specific time. Because you can get the music anywhere. I mean, if I want to listen to whatever it is, I can go online now and just listen to it. I'm not waiting for an hour or half an hour for someone to play it on a radio station. Like, don't get me wrong. People will still do that, and that's fine. But I think that the, the people between the songs become more important. And mm-hmm. personal branding is, is really is really important. But personal brands have been important forever. Like, if you look at this, if you look at sport, for instance, you take David Beckham, mm-hmm. his personal brand, he's a, he's a line daddy dad. He has been for his entire career, uh, both when he was playing football and post-football. So, so, so now... Let's just say there was his personal brand wasn't as lucrative. Let's say there was a big scandal or whatever it is. Will Adidas drop him like a hot potato? Maybe. So it's exactly the same for for a radio station. Um, it's exactly the same for, for for your business. You know, if there was someone there who, for instance, brought your business into disrepute, you'll 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 probably drop them like a hot potato. So it's it's exactly the same thing. So I think personal branding is very very important. Um, and I also think that commercial stations will look at what their talent will bring to the party, be it a following, be it experience, um, whatever. And um, so I think in order to get on, um, I think you, you need to show intent from the word go and other platforms. Mm-hmm. And the digital space allows people mm-hmm. to grow, be able to put out their, their work. Um, and that's a really important thing. And I guess that personal branding from your perspective is also important for the other types of work that you do, the presenting work aside from that, the events and so on as well. Do you become quite conscious of that and having to manage that sort of brand brand reputation? Yeah, um, again, I, 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 I wouldn't put anything online that I wouldn't say on air. So yeah. that's the way I sort of, that's the way I sort of monitor what I put out there. Yeah. Um, Again, on air, I, I try to be myself as much as I can. And online, I try to be, I just am who I am. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm very aware, and over the years, I've been more aware of who I am and what I stand for. You know, I don't, I don't, um, I don't hide my age. I don't, I don't try to be something I'm not. I know certainly um, there would have been a time where you know broadcasters would say, "Oh, you don't, you don't tell anyone your age because you'll get to an age and then, and then uh, you know they'll want to get rid of you." And I'm not saying that I'm not saying that that doesn't happen, but you know, I've been real the whole way along. I'm not going to suddenly go, "Hey, I'm 25 again." <laughs> you know, it doesn't it doesn't work that way for me. And the way the 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 other thing about it is as well is I think. I talk, I talk um, an awful lot um, whenever I do speak and whatever about the journey. We're all on the journey and, um, and whatever the next thing is going to be, the next thing is going to be. I think it's imperative to do the thing that you're doing now, right, as best as you possibly can, because not only will today be looked after, but whatever's down the line will be looked after because of, of what you're doing now. So I, as much as I have my eyes on what's next, when I think about it, I'm, I'm very much focused on the now and try to enjoy now the moment because 
you, you know, you can just get so caught up. And, and, and years ago, I was that person so caught up in what's next, what's next, what's next, what's next, without actually appreciating what's going on right at this moment in time. Yeah. In terms of, you know, what's going on, right? well, we know the pandemic is, is going on right now. Um, and there's been quite a sort of step change in terms of how people communicate, um, the types of new platforms that people are using and so on. Is there any of those things, maybe even TikTok or whatever you've tried, that you think that some of the changes are going to be lasting? You know, is there anything there that you can sort of say, well, I think such and such might last? We have had video conferencing and we have had video calling for years now. We've never used it. We've never used it the way we're using it now. This, to me, is absolutely brilliant. You know, I was sitting in my kitchen having a cup of coffee 10 minutes ago and now I'm speaking to you and, um, and you're recording this. You know, I, um, I'm a, I am a people person. I like to meet people. And, and, um, and, and I suppose for me, I'm, I'm, I'm self-employed. So, you know, you have to go out and try to get business. And I'm a great believer that people buy people. And so it's building those relationships uh, in order to, um, I suppose, in, in order to make your business work. It's the same for every business. Um, so I would be running about that time, you know, well, you know, meeting people and, and doing whatever it is and, and try to make it work, sitting in traffic and whatever. And I'm not saying that's not going to happen on the other side of this, but isn't it really good that you can do Teams meetings mm-hmm. and you can catch up with people. They maybe can be at home. They may be in between meetings or whatever. I think it just allows us to be a bit more efficient with our time. I'm not saying I don't want to meet anybody anymore and I'm going to become a recluse. That's not what I'm saying. But for certain things, like even even for the radio station you know you've got people who work at all different times of the day people who are coming in the evening people who are coming in first thing in the morning trying to find a time whenever you can get everybody together in the room to go through a presentation whereas now realistically you know if you pick a time in the middle of the day no matter where everyone is they can just log in and do it and and um and i actually think it's it's up the communication level which is a really good thing um and i think that sort of element not for everything but i think i think that element will be used even more so on the other side of this. Have you been producing different types of content during this time than, than more so than you have previously? Um, I, I, go through, I go through periods, I suppose, of right. creating quite a bit and then times whenever I'm maybe not creating as much. Um, I, uh, you know, if I'm feeling really creative, I tend to go with it. And then at other times, maybe I'm, maybe in a little bit of a creative slump I, I try not to beat myself up I mean when 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 I'm when I'm I try to be consistent I think consistency is so important the, the radio show it's like it's consistency is so important and I bang on about it all the time you know I talk about you know there's a certain level and you know we'll pick about the level but we'll never go below that level and that you know and then, and then and as time goes on we'll, we'll push that level up and push that level up and that's the way I sort of deal with it and it's the same with digital stuff online I think I, I, I'm a, I, I try not to be in a situation where you're putting stuff out for the sake of it. Yeah. I think that's, I think that's you know, there, there's so much spam out there. So I think it's very important just to, when you've got something that you think will resonate with your audience, then that's the time to put it out. Mm-hmm. Um, but putting stuff out for the sake of it, I'm, I'm not a big fan of, and I really try to, 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 to stay away from that. I mean, that's a really good piece of advice for anybody who's looking at, either creating content or actually becoming a broadcaster in their own right, you know, if that's what they're interested in doing. If, if there was any other tips, like maybe, you know, top three tips that you would provide um, content producers or anybody who's, you know, particularly ambitious about developing content, be that for radio, be it broadcasting, digital, what, what would be your top three? Okay. The most important thing is to be yourself um, and to, to know who you are and know what you stand for and know your, know your own values and stick to those you know there is there's so many um sites out there online that will gain massive traction through sharing other people's videos and that's fine that's that's really good it's a really good platform there's been so many um platforms that i mean cool cool do that we, we, we share people's videos lad bible joe um i mean the list goes on and yeah you can maybe try and do that yourself but there's already all these big players in the marketplace so whenever I'm putting out content generally, it's about it's about it's about my my brand, it's about what I'm doing, it's about whether it's about it's all the stuff I talk about in the radio, it's whether it's with it's about something that we have shared 
um, a kind of shared experience with my family or an experience that I have within our community, um, or I'm highlighting something that I believe that the, the people who follow me will, would like, you know, whether that's music or whether that's some sort of entertainment thing, or maybe it's my thoughts and feelings on something um, that, uh, that I feel passionate enough to put it out there. Um, so I, I that 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 you know that's what I'd be doing. There's there's there, there's there's other pages and different bits and bobs who who um, try to gain traction and try to get big following from sharing other other pe- people's content or whatever it is and try to piggyback on that. It's not really my strategy. I'm sort of just trying to be myself. And even if it's a smaller audience, you you want the engagement level to be more. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so like, so like, let's just say I, I try to break it down to like, let's say it's a party. Okay. And let's say there's a thousand people at the party and they're having an okay time. Well, for me, I prefer to have three or 400 people at the party and them all going absolutely nuts. So <laughs> that's it. That's the way I look at it. <laughs> that's a good analogy. Well, listen, Pete, um, thank you so much for your time today. I mean, that's been really, really interesting to review. Um, it's lovely to speak to you. Um, you know, obviously we, we go back a wee while, just two or three years, and we're both 25. And, uh, <laughs> um, but it's, it's really, you know, I always learn something new um, about, about yourself, about communication, about the creative process, which I find fascinating, you know, in terms of how you um, produce that. So um, it's been great to have you today and thank you so much for sharing. Um, you're very welcome. It's lovely to see you, Jill. And the final thing I will say is there's no right and there's no wrong. And I think that's really I think I think that's really important. You know, sometimes you just stumble across something that works for you. And sometimes your best ideas or so you think are the best ideas are the ones that maybe don't work out the way you, you wanted them to. So um uh, you know, I think the most important thing is in terms of anything creatively, is that you can think about it all day long, but unless you actually go and do it, you'll never know. Yeah, yeah, true. Appreciate it, Pete. Thank you so much for your time. You're very welcome. Nice to see you. Talk to you soon. Bye.